would like to thank the NFL Foundation for the generosity in making this course possible. The Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors, or TAPS, has spent the last decade developing a best practice program to support survivors of suicide loss. Based on our work with thousands of suicide loss survivors, we know that losing a loved one to suicide can leave behind a wake of devastation that can be difficult to navigate without guidance and support. Suicide loss survivors often find it hard to reach out for help, and the people in their lives often don't know how to help. This experience is very common among the survivors we serve at TAPS, and was also my personal experience. My name is Kim Ruwako, and my life drastically changed after my husband's suicide. I am the surviving spouse of Major John Ruwako, and I currently serve as the Vice President of Suicide Prevention and Postvention at TAPS. Thank you for taking the time to better support those in the military and veteran communities who have been affected by suicide loss. We hope that by the end of this course, you will better understand the importance of postvention care, begin to understand phase one of TAPS postvention model, learn key issues that may interfere with a healthy grief journey, and identify important resources for suicide loss survivors. Suicide is traumatic. First, those exposed to suicide are at increased risk for suicide, mental health disorders, addiction, and reclusiveness. Further, survivors of suicide loss report higher levels of rejection, shame, and blame than all other survivor groups. Also, about 50% of military suicide deaths occur in the family home. This means that loved ones may find the body of their loved one or actually witness the death. Because of this, trauma may need to be addressed separately to avoid complicating the grief journey. Trauma, mental health problems, and suicide risk are some of the many issues that need to be stabilized following a death by suicide. A referral to professional care may be necessary to support these particular issues. At TAPS, we have found that a combination of professional care and peer-based support is a best practice approach to healing this type of trauma. Questions about why a person has died by suicide is a struggle for many suicide loss survivors. Without understanding the suicidal mind and the many factors that contributed to the death, people tend to blame themselves or other people. This not only increases risk, but can also cause a survivor to avoid seeking help or reject support. Resentment, anger, and blame can cause families to fracture and may result in additional relationship loss. Children are at particular risk for self-blame and shame associated with suicide loss. At the scene of my husband's death, I was given professional guidance that my children were too young to understand the concept of suicide. I was told to tell them that their dad had died in an accident. My boys were eight and 10 years old at the time. I wanted to do the right thing and protect them. I also didn't trust my own instincts because I did not foresee my husband taking his life. I took this advice and told my children that their dad had died in an accident. It felt wrong and added to my stressors, but it wasn't until my son spoke up that I knew I had made a mistake. On the way to my son's 11th birthday party, just two weeks after the death of his dad, Joey said, Mom, I think I killed dad. I asked him if I could salt the nachos and he said no, because too much salt isn't good for you. But when he wasn't looking, I salted them. He must have had an accident because of that. It was in that moment that I pulled over the car and I told both boys the truth. Although views are changing, suicide is still misunderstood and stigmatized. Healthcare providers, faith leaders, and other caregivers may be ill-informed or may hold beliefs about suicide that can be harmful to survivors. At the same time, suicide loss survivors are in a very vulnerable state. They may not trust their own instincts and are in need of guidance. In addition to painful messages from others, many suicide loss survivors have grown up learning about suicide in a way that complicates their grief. This is true in my case. I was desperate to figure out how to talk to my children about their dad's death and ask the priest for guidance. He then replied that suicide is a sin 
This statement sent me on a spiral of fear. Where is my husband? How do I keep my kids from hearing this? And must I pull away from the one main support system? I have since learned that in most faith-faith communities, there is an understanding that someone who dies by suicide, in most cases, is very sick, not bad. Despite knowing this, many survivors face these kinds of painful messages. Helping families navigate religious and spiritual questions can provide comfort and relief when they are in their deepest despair. It is important to explore spiritual and religious beliefs early in the grief journey. This is especially important to support families while they are making funeral and memorial decisions. Memorializing the deceased in a way that honors family beliefs but also provides comfort is an important part of stabilization. Deciding how to talk about suicide to their families, children, friends, and coworkers can also be a challenge for survivors. Suicide loss survivors may hesitate to tell the truth about the cause of death in an effort to protect people or out of shame. Beginning a healing journey with misinformation or a lie can make things much more difficult and may create a family division which is difficult to repair. In most cases, TAPS recommends telling the truth in a developmentally appropriate and simple way. This is the best way to build a foundation of healing, decrease risk, and support a healthy family structure. Grieving after a suicide loss requires a proactive approach. Clinicians, friends, and family must be proactive about helping survivors stabilize suicide-specific issues soon after the loss. Sometimes people think that suicide loss survivors need to be left alone to grieve. From working with thousands of survivors, we have learned that support is critical. Isolation and withdrawal may actually increase risk and create other problems. In fact, it is important to offer immediate support to help the family and to connect them to organizations like TAPS that can offer programs and services. Peer-based support is an invaluable resource in supporting survivors of military suicide loss. Often, the most valuable peer support emerges from relationships developed as a result of common struggles. For example, a spouse with children who lost her Marine Corps husband to suicide may receive the best peer support from another Marine Corps spouse with children who has also lost her husband to suicide. This kind of peer understands the complicated emotions and challenges associated with this journey. TAPS has developed many levels of peer-to-peer -peer support that meet this need. A TAPS peer professionals provide the initial outreach to new survivors. These peers are suicide loss survivors and have training in grief, trauma, and risk. They connect with new survivor and assess immediate and long-term needs. They can connect the new survivor to appropriate treatment if needed and provide initial stabilization. New survivors are then often connected with a peer mentor. All TAPS peer mentors are suicide loss survivors who are at least two years out from their own loss and have obtained training in mentoring. They are matched with newer survivors in order to offer ongoing support and mentoring. These peer mentors offer a beacon of hope for new survivors and can help provide a roadmap for a healthier grief journey. So how can people in roles outside of organizations like TAPS help? Here are some suggestions for supporting a family impacted by suicide loss. Reach out. Be proactive about reaching out to survivors. Oftentimes we think the best thing to do is to give people space or time to grieve. But suicide loss survivors may see this as rejection or judgment. They need to know that how their loved one died does not change the way their friends, family, coworkers, and others feel about them. Let them know that you want to support them. Be present. Suicide is complicated, confusing, and painful to those who have lost a loved one in this manner. Emotions can be extreme, conflicting, anger, and shame. These emotions can be intimidating and survivors often have difficulty finding a person who can just be with them, listening and hugging, and just be present without trying to fix anything can be an enormous gift to those who are suffering. Remember the deceased. Survivors of military suicide loss 
often fear that all that will be remembered about their loved one is the way they died. The military puts a lot of emphasis on how someone dies, and survivors worry that the cause of their loved one's death will replace the memories of the life they lived and all the service and sacrifice they gave throughout their life and their career. Using the name of the deceased and recalling special memories and telling funny stories can reassure families that all the wonderful things about the person they lost won't be forgotten because of one awful moment in time. Just do it. Survivors who have just lost a loved one to suicide often aren't sure what they need and don't have the energy to reach out. In difficult days that follow a suicide, well-meaning people often say, call me if you need anything. Instead, I would encourage you to look around, see what the surviving family needs, and just do it. Little things like cleaning the house, walking the dog, or taking care of the kids for a couple hours can make a big difference to a grieving survivor who is overwhelmed. Connect. Hopefully, this course has made you aware of some of the specific issues that suicide loss survivors struggle with. You may not have all the answers, but I encourage you to be proactive about connecting the survivor with support and resources, helping survivors build a strong foundation based on trust, honesty, and love can decrease risk and set up a family for healing. Healing from suicide loss is very different than other types of bereavement. TAPS offers comprehensive support free of charge to those who are grieving the loss of a military loved one. We are available 24-7 at 1-800-959-TAPS. In addition to offering a variety of services and programs for survivors who have lost a military loved one, TAPS provides longer and more in-depth trainings to support clinicians, peer specialists, community providers, family members, faith leaders, in best practice support of suicide loss survivors. In addition, please visit www.taps.org forward slash suicide to learn more. Thank you for your support of our military service members and the families of the fallen. We hope this course has given you some good information on how to best support survivors and help them build a healthy foundation for grieving. The Veterans Crisis Line number is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Please call 1-800-273-8255 and then press 1 if you or someone you know is in crisis or just wants to talk. If you have any questions or need assistance, go to the Psych Armor website or call the Psych Armor support line at 844-779-2427. Thank you for completing this course and taking that one step further in learning about our American veterans.